ball a little more now. Every match means that much more getting to the finals. All right, our third match in the five-week Nolts Ford Championship Series. Let's meet our two bowlers. First of all, our number three seed and the challenger this afternoon, making his first appearance with us from East Kingston, New Hampshire, it's Brian Fuller. Yeah, it's from the port side, too. A left-hander from uh, East Kingston, as you said, carries 125 average and uh, 681 for his roll-off score to qualify for the show. And uh, the scores, as we mentioned several times during the last couple of weeks, have been very, very close. In fact, between Brian Fuller's 681 in third place down to uh, Bill Chartier in sixth place was 674, only a seven-pin difference separating the four bowlers. All right, let's talk about the guy who's won the last two weeks. He had a 374 last week, a 364 the week prior to that. That's Clarence Davis. That means he hits 384 this week. I guess, yeah. I guess that's the way it goes. But, uh, no, he's been bowling well enough to win. Uh, he hasn't had a serious challenge. Uh, at least from last week. The week before he did up until a couple, a couple, couple games and last game he uh, kind of pulled away. Same with last week and uh, he's got a tough one this week in Brian Fuller though. All right, we'll be back with the first string of our match. Tell you a little bit more about the bonus ball contest. Don't forget for a 200 string, a brand new Ford Escort from Nalts Ford in Hooksett and in Manchester. We'll be back with the first string of our match and more on Candlepin Stars and Strikes right after these words. Don't go away. Here's the situation for this third week of our championship series here on Stars and Strikes. Our number five seed, Clarence Davis, has beaten Bill Chartier and Dick McElveen. And now he will face the challenge of our number three seed, Brian Fuller. Next week, of course, Ed Emerson will be here. And in two weeks, it'll be the series championship match with $1,000 to the winner, 500 to the runner-up. Bill Logan, of course, all he has to do is sit back and get ready for that ladder championship match in two weeks but right now brian fuller is set to get us started this week on lane 32 here at park place lanes in windham as we begin uh, week three of the Nalts ford championship certainly want to thank uh, tony maceos and all the fine folks at Nalts ford for their support and wow. that's the way to begin well first time on the show first ball he throws on the show it's a strike remember that we'll have trivia Trivia game later, years from now. Remember Brian Fuller, first ball he threw? And a second ball? Oh, wow. Now it's really trivia, isn't it? Yeah. Wow. It's That's like also, hitting, uh, hitting home runs, your first two at bats. <laughs> wow. What a start. The also, I'd like to remember that we, uh, 200 game is a new car, folks. Mm. Now Clarence Davis, wow. Four horsemen plus the nine. Nope, oh, everything but the nine. It's going to be a ten. Well, apparently Brian isn't nervous. Well, if he is nervous, watch <laughs> out when he... <laughs> I've known Brian for quite a few years, and uh, he can string them together. He's a good Candlepin bowler. Well, he's got 125 average. Boy, right. this is going to be a, a real immediate tough hole for Clarence Davis to climb out of if Brian does anything at all here on this second strike. What a way to start. Looking for three in a row. Hasn't even warmed up. He's only thrown two balls. <laughs> Looks good. Looks good. Not bad. Leaves himself three, four, though. Twenty-eight in the first. You try the right side, the three pin. Try to cut it into the four. Nope. Six through three. Oh, wow. <laughs> one two pocket, never a doubt about this one either. 
Watch him explode. Oh my. Three for four. Terrence Davis just looking to put his first mark up on the board here. Try to weather the storm a little bit. There's no defense, it's all offense. Four horsemen to the right. Nice yeah, shot. Oh, pretty shot. And that, of course, is not an easy shot, it is as easy as it looks sometimes. Not to mention the fact that your opponent's thrown four frames and three of them were strikes. <laughs> it's a little more added pressure on making those shots. And Clarence may have a little something going here with the five, seven, eight. I think if he drives right toward the five pin, the wood in between should carry the seven and worry about the eight. Up high enough, nice shot. So Clarence Davis puts two marks together to try and get back in this thing. Pretty tough when you're trailing by 29 pins after two frames. Brian Fuller on a strike, and this time it's through the middle. This ball wants to break left to right. That time a little sharp on the head pin, leaves himself the five pin in the middle with a 6-10 on the right, 4-7 on the left. And it looks like he could go five pin in the piece of wood in front of the 6-10. and ten. That's what he tries. Oh, wow. Oh, what a shot for Brian Fuller. With, with the five pin at the same time. Nice shot. What a string Brian has going. Again, he did it again. Four strikes for Brian Fuller. He has a 96 half and a spare up in the sixth. There's the double, uh, well, there's another, another strike, one, two pocket. I'm tongue tied myself. I'm getting so excited. 96 at the turn. Remember, a 200 game is a new car. the third box, the ball he threw in the third box was not that bad. He left himself the 3-4. And that very easily could have been a mark there, or at least have a shot at a mark. Well, Brian came to play. <laughs> Clarence Davis moving over to lane 31 for box number six. Red Eagle. Clarence sits with 60 after five, and I know a lot of you out there would be more than pleased with 60 after five frames, but if someone said you're gonna get on the show and bowl 60 for the first five and be 36 pins behind, <laughs> wow. And it threatens to go higher because Brian is working on a strike. Brian's personal high single is 190. Well, you know, if he throws a strike here, get the keys out, because we're close to a car. Really needs, of course, with the open frame, he needs another double, really, to, uh, to offset that open frame in the third. Here we go. He'll get a look at his good. Looks good, well. Brian. Watch out, he's got it! Oh! Oh! <laughs> Is Brian nervous or what? He, he walked around and pushed the button on lane 31 instead of lane 32. My, oh my. We are getting close. Big ball here on the double. Triple! Oh, he's oh. Oh, wow. sure that he had done it. That four pin came toward us. And it looked to be certain that he had the triple. He's got a shot. He's going to have to mark out. There's another one. That is 155 plus a fill ball in the eighth. Oh, wow. Meanwhile, what do you do if you're Clarence Davis? Ask him for a ride home. <laughs> <laughs> nice Spare mark. for Clarence. Nice mark by Clarence. Two, four, seven with a nine. 
Remember, first 200 game in this ladder, a new car, and Brian is well on his way. He's rolling at a 175 clip right now, plus the fill. So he can do it without a double strike, he can, but he's gonna have to have big marks all the way out. Ninety-six through eight for Clarence Davis. On, and here comes Brian Fuller for the final two in this first string. They're all big now. All big balls. You can't afford a low fill either. He needs two more marks. A little extra time this time. A little extra time in the delivery. Looks good. Looks good. No. Okay. He's still okay. That's 163 in through eight. He needs this one. Two and four. He's on it. He's yep. got it. <laughs> he's got to have, if he doesn't strike here, he's got to have at least an, a seven fill, rather an eight fill, in order to insure himself. Oh, oh no. my. Oh, my. Well, his only shot now is to convert this, but now he'll he'll be short. Right. He'll be short. The best he can do now is 197. 197. Oh, boy. So close. Wow. Unbelievable. Funny thing is, he's not even going to break the record of high single here on Stars and Strikes, which is held by Rick Farwell, a 196. But what a string. And he, well, in that situation, you say to yourself, I don't want a half whister. I want to hit the head pin, and that's what he did, and just a little too full. A little more speed, a little less speed would have hit the one-two pocket or the one-three, and who knows. So, uh, fantastic game. Well, there is a 187. A 187 for Brian Fuller. That is the second highest string ever on Stars and Strikes. The only one better is Rick Farwell's 196. Congratulations from Clarence Davis, who will now step up for his final two here in the first. Wow. My, oh, my. I really thought uh, we were going to give it away, the way he was bowling. and Well, you know, you can always say you get to the point where you choke, but he didn't because he hit the object pin. He hit that right. head pin on the mark. That's what he had to do. And even in the third frame, when he had the open, hit the head pin there and left himself the 3-4, really wasn't a a spare lead that you want to shoot at every day of the week for a new car. <laughs> Great. Did about as well as he could. Uh, meanwhile, of course, Brian will more importantly have a very sizable lead here at the end of the first string. Nice shot. Good spare for Clarence. Three and seven. Clarence is probably going to be over his average here, 123, but. <laughs> and he comes up with a nine fill. Well, this match is, is, you know, it's not over because Clarence is throwing a good ball. There's no question about it. And uh, 125 is nothing to sneeze at. And two games to go. 187 for Brian Fuller, 125 for Clarence Davis. The middle string and details on the bonus ball contest after these words. At the end of today's show, we'll have $60 in the bonus ball contest as we have not had a winner for a little while now and we hope you have your cards in. If not, here's how to do it. Send regular size postcards only, please, with your name, your address, full address, by the way, and also your number from 1 to 10. The number corresponds to the number of pins you think will be dropped on the bonus ball thrown by our winning bowler at the end of every show. If the number of pins that drop matches the number on your card and we draw it out, you win whatever's accumulated. If not, you win a TV50 NHCBA desk pen from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden. And be sure to mail along those postcards to Park Place Lanes, Route 28, Wyndham, New Hampshire, 03087. Middle string set to go, and Clarence Davis will get us started over on lane 32. After a 125 opening game for Clarence, he, of course, has won the last two weeks here. 
And now he finds himself trailing by 62 because of an incredible 187 opening string by Brian Fuller. Now well, Clarence game plan now is to uh, just keep marking and put up as many marks as he can, kind of climb back in slowly. Oh boy, oh. let's see. No, nope. not quite. This would be another thing if that Clarence threw a 90 game or something or he was struggling, but he did bowl a decent game and he seemed to be relatively um, sharp with, uh, with his bowling. So never know. I mean, he's thrown some big games the last several weeks. Punching through the middle. I don't know how Brian feels, but I'm kind of worn out after that game <laughs> so, <laughs> uh, You work just as hard for them, I think, especially with a new car on the line. That's exciting. I'd like to thank the Naltz, Naltz Ford for putting up that extra bonus for us. Well, here's Brian Fuller. Get a look over the shoulder at the left-hander. First ball in the second string, and is he going to start again? <laughs> Leaves the 10-pin this time. Why didn't I miss the head pin in that spare in the last one? Maybe I would get a 9-pin drop. Brian had five strikes in the first string. One of them, or two of them, rather, were on doubles. Starts with a spare here in the second string. Huh. Kind of. Slow start for him. <laughs> start the first game with two strikes. <laughs> Boy, they're just going for him right now. He's off target twice and uh, not a bad leave. Head pin in the four seven, considerably considering that he missed the head pin. He's got it. Oh, the wood killed the shot. Wood deflected the ball away from the four and seven. Okay, yeah, but away from the throw up. And a ten box for Brian, adding to his lead. Which is sizable. Brian will have a shot at the high triple here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, which was rolled by Peter Flynn back on June 23rd of 1985. It was a 482. Brian still has a lot of work to do, though, to catch that one. now he's hitting the object pin being the head pin with that first ball but he needs to make an adjustment and make it quick he can't afford to go too many frames without putting some marks up nice 10 and now brian fuller another look at clarence's 10 box snaps the wood off the four and seven Comes across to get the three. Seven, nine, and ten for Brian. In uh, the almost four years now that we've been doing Stars and Strikes, we've had only four strings of 180 or better singles competition. It was you and who were the other three? Oh, no, mine didn't count. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> um, Bill Goturch hit a 180 back in April of 1986.
Peter Flynn hit a 183 in June of 1985. And now in second place is this man's 187, second highest. And the top single string ever here on Stars and Strikes was Rick Farwell with a 196, and that was in June of 84. Looks like he's throwing the same ball. Must something is something is oh wow. <laughs> <laughs> what were you about to say? <laughs> I say he's not getting the real good spare leaves that he was getting. <laughs> but it doesn't really matter because he'll make these too. <laughs> That was a pretty shot, and we'll take a break right here with Brian Fuller putting a rather remarkable spare up in the fourth. We'll take a timeout and come right back. Don't go away. Clarence Davis. A long road ahead of this gentleman right here. No luck at all. We're right around the four pin. Interesting to compare, uh, Dan, the 187 that Brian threw today with the with the 196 a few years ago thrown by Rick Farwell. Rick in that string had 11 marks with no open boxes. But the difference was, in that string, Farwell opened up with three spares, then a strike, spare, strike, and then spares in the seventh, eighth, and ninth, and then a double strike in the tenth with a seven on it for a 196. So he didn't even, he came to that last string without even a chance for the right. 200. You move his double strike up one box and he's got the 200 with no problem. That's, uh, that's the benefit of those double strikes where Brian had in the first and second box and then again in the uh, seventh and eighth. All right, six and seven. Brian with a rather ordinary 63 half. <laughs> he is human. <laughs> yeah, I guess so. Whoops. <laughs> but maybe not. <laughs> I tell you, when those strikes go, there's no question about them. Watch this one. Ooh, awesome. That's now six strikes on the day for Brian Fuller, and it's only half over. And there's one Another for Clarence one. Davis, his first. Some people don't get six strikes in a month, and he's got a string and a half. <laughs> yeah. Looking for a double. Oh, flush again. Oh my, it'll be a four fill. Brian has some rooters here. target for one of the few times here today. And that's for sure. One of the very few times he's missed a head pin with the first ball.
Next week, Ed Emerson is here for the series semifinal match. And then in two weeks, the ladder championship match against Bill Logan for the man who survives the next two. Bill Logan threw a 7.45 in the roll-off. Eight for Brian. Clarence Davis taking a look at the scoreboard and <laughs> I don't know if he's gonna go over and make some uh, make some changes or what, I don't know, but not a heck of a lot he can do here except just keep firing and hope that something good will happen. lives in Exeter with his wife Teresa, their four children, Michelle, Debbie, Danny, and Richard. Clarence works as a tree foreman. And he has not had a lot to shoot at here in the second string. This time the one, three, seven, eight. That's pretty tough to recover for a guy throws an opening game at you of 187. That's a tendency to take the wind right out of your sails. <laughs> it's a different uh, strategy too, Dan, uh, from the roll-off situation, for example, where, either, where there are five strings and where, in the case of our show here, you only have to finish in the top six to get on. So it's, it's different when you're looking at a top six situation rather than just one opponent. That's right. In a three in three three string total, as opposed to five, you can usually absorb a, a big game thrown at you. Um, but in this case, it's, it's, uh, it's awful tough. I mean, Brian has come down to earth a little bit. He's only at a 117 clip. If, if uh, Clarence could have thrown a 140 or 150 himself, he would have been right back into it. Those of you who've played golf, will understand the comparison here. Brian Fuller with a 187, and now he needs a mark to throw his average in the very next game. Sounds like getting a hole in one and then going eight or nine in the next hole. <laughs> <laughs> I missed a hole in one once, Doug, you know that? By four strokes. Yeah, boy, that's tough. A bad lie. <laughs> On the T, <tee>, right? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Three, six, and ten for a ten box and a one sixteen. That's what it's going to be. There it is. And a three oh three for two strings. For Clarence Davis, it's a two twenty two. So there's the situation with one string remaining here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes, and we'll be back with it right after we have these messages. All right, here we go. Brian Fuller has 303. Now we're going to play the third string. <laughs> 310. Some lumber in between. Nope. I, I have heard Brian say it. <laughs> And his rooters are, whoa. <laughs> Come on, guys. You're his rooters. He's this human. A, this is a tough crowd. <laughs> oh. They want nothing but excellence here. Look at Brian. Yeah. Yeah, he throws one bad ball. They're ready to abandon ship. Jump off the ship and leave him. <laughs> a very demanding bowling yeah. crowd here at, yeah. at Barclays Lanes. Start walking down 93, Brian, and you can catch up with him. <laughs> Two, seven, six, and ten. Well 
This is a, a battle of the foreman also, uh, Dan. Brian Fuller works as a foreman at Cato Manufacturing. Clarence Davis. Oh boy, yeah. oh boy. <laughs> That's, That's just Clarence needs. <laughs> Let's see if maybe the, no, nope, I thought that was going to go over and maybe take the seven pin out. Well, he missed the five pin on the right-hand side, slapped that wood, he'll get the five and seven, but, no, nope, went the other side and tried. Pick it up for a 10, Clarence. <laughs> uh, it's one of those days for Clarence, I guess. I can tell you one thing for sure, if, if he does come back and win, this would be the most amazing comeback we've ever had. Ooh. Oh, oh how nice recovery. That? that was the strike ball. Took out the three pin with the first ball and came back to spare it up. Nice ball. Now, ordinarily, you'd probably see that done with the nine drop, leaving the three pin, and then pick that up for the spare. Clarence well, figured he'd try it the other way. Now, two, the six and a ten on the right. He's bowling. You expect him to cut the two right into the six and a ten for the spare. Oh, there like that. <laughs> There was never a doubt. He's got to show his rooters. Hey, I'm still here. And still bowling pretty well. And for the first time in the match, Brian now has as many spares as strikes. He has <laughs> six of each. Seven fill. And another one. Clarence Davis on the spare, and again, right through the middle. Three and two split, three, six, ten on the right, four, seven on the left. Oh, nice try. Ooh, leaving the seven. It's getting a little mix here, but it might have mixed a little too much. Now he's got the four, seven, ten. A lot of extra wood, though. Well, he's going to just drive the wood back in front of the six and ten. Hopefully, he can get some action on that other piece behind it. Well, he's going to the other side. Oh. And the nine box, and we will. Pause right here, take a check at the scoreboard. Brian Fuller in command with a spare up in the fourth. We'll be back with the rest of this third string on Candlepin Stars and Strikes in a minute. Right up. Brian Fuller's working on a spare here in the fourth. Brian, a 500 triple here, uh, 400 triple seems pretty much a foregone conclusion. It's just a question of how far over 400 he'll be. Another spare leave, the one and three. covers <laughs> a 
I'm going to have to have uh, Dottie Lark take a run down and get that pin out of the way. Girl, Dottie, good form. Oh, that's what, haven't you always wanted to do that, take a pin and just throw it down the lane? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the ball just isn't wide enough sometimes. <laughs> You saw the reaction of Clarence saying, oh, just let me finish this match. <laughs> Clarence is probably asking, going to ask uh, Brian, was it something I said? Or <laughs> that first game didn't mean to rally you up. Now, if you're just tuning in. Where were you? Yeah. We had a... <laughs> Well, we almost gave a car away. First 200 game in the Lotto Championship wins the new Ford Escort. And Brian Fuller opened this match with 187. Had a shot at it going to the last two frames. Fuller with 14 marks in the match. A chance at 15. Four pin all alone. A piece of wood out in front could give him some trouble. Well, not too bad. It's the same as hitting a single pin. Gonna cap it. No problem for this gentleman today. He's doing it with spares now. He was doing it with strikes earlier. And now he's making the shots. And let's see if he can show us another one here. The one, two, or rather the two, four, six, ten. He's going to try to split the two, or possibly with the left hand to come inside the two. No. Tried to split them. Too far left. He'll grab two. Well, he's got the 400 already. it out for a spare. Finally gets a break, but unfortunately it's a little, little late. Just gets the wood to snap around for the five pin. In the uh -huh. pocket, but light. Five, six, nine, ten with the seven in the left hand corner. And no wood. Final two now for Brian Fuller. See what kind of a total he can hang up there. He's at 4.04 right now. Watch out. A lonely two pin. Ten spares to go with six strikes. Oh, 
<laughs> Brian turned around to the look. The wood looked too good. <laughs> he was debating whether to play the wood. And, well, there we go. <laughs> Sometimes you got to hide your pride. Yeah. <laughs> His Four. friends in the background would have let him know about that, though. <laughs> 433 for Brian Fuller. Oh, uh, just another day at the office. Wow. Nice bowling, Brian Fuller. Clarence Davis now, final two. Clarence will receive a check for $125. For fourth place here on the ladder series and also a plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of Winchenden. Brian Fuller moves on to face Ed Emerson next nice week. Mark. Good finish for our champion. We'll crown a new champion in Brian Fuller. And it will be a seven fill for a 114 for Clarence Davis and a three string total of 336. But it was all Brian Fuller today. When you start with a 187, that pretty much puts the lights out right there. Brian Fuller wins it and he'll move on in this latter series. The Nalts Ford Championship. We'll be back to talk to the bowlers and have the bonus ball contest in a minute. Back at Park Place Lanes, Doug Brown along with Dan Murphy. And uh, Dan, that was really something. A 187, it's uh, it's pretty tough to come back if you're the other guy. And uh, and Brian was just incredible that first string. Well, I, I thought we gave the car away. I yeah. really did. You know, the last two boxes. And I don't know who was more excited, him or me. And uh, my hands started to sweat. And I wasn't even throwing the ball. I can imagine what he must have felt like. All right, let's meet the two bowlers and find out uh, a little bit more about this match. First of all, our two-time champion, Clarence Davis. Come on up, Clarence. We have a, uh, a check for you here for $125 and also a, a runner-up plaque from the NNR Trophy Company of uh, Winchenden, Mass. Uh, it's pretty tough to come back from a string like that. Especially when I ran into a brick wall. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that there's not really, uh, of course, you didn't have any breaks go your way either, but uh, even even so, it would have been a long way back. Oh, yeah, it would have. Uh, Especially when you get that down, 187 oh, yeah. down. Yeah. It's hard to come back. Well, certainly we appreciate uh, your efforts, the two great uh, matches that you rolled for the wins, and uh, we hope to see you again sometime real soon. I'll be back. All thank right. Thank you. All right, Clarence. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. From Exeter, Clarence Davis, our runner-up today after winning two programs on the show. And now we will send it over to Brian Fuller once again, who is standing by over on lane 31 for that bonus ball. And uh, this could very well be a strike, so I guess we'll have to watch out. Hope you have your card in our big TV here. Uh, see, the, see, the pressure was on. The pressure was on for the bonus ball, and all he could come up with was with a four. Come on over, Brian. Dan Murphy drawing the card. Yeah, now, Dan. Now, okay, is, now, now is the time. Now is the time. Boy, closer than you might have expected. A six was the guess for Helen Pieton or Pieton from Manchester. So not a match, Helen. We'll be sending you a TV50 NHCBA desk pen, and that means the uh, jackpot will go up to $70 next week. Well, the jackpot is going up for this man. <laughs> that was a great string, Brian. Uh, three pins off your own uh, high single, but I'm sure you were thinking about the car, too. Yep, hit the head pin. That's all I could do. Went through the middle. What, uh, what, were you, what were you feeling while you were up there just throwing strike after strike after strike? Must have been, uh, must have been nice. Good. <laughs> a, lot of people, a, lot of, a lot of people don't know what that feeling is like to just step up there and throw all those strikes back to back. Well, you always want to throw the strikes. <laughs> <laughs> and then you made some, uh, some terrific spares later on in the match uh, to come up with that 433, an outstanding match, really. Thank you. Well, we uh, look forward to seeing you again next week. It'll be Ed Emerson here, the number two seed. Uh, things getting a little tougher as we move up the ladder, and we'll be looking for you next week. Okay, good All right. enough. Brian Fuller with the... Four, with the 433 this week, and uh, I don't know if he can top it, but we'll certainly see. Next week, we'll take a look at the ladder right now, in fact, to give you a little preview of what's coming up in the next two weeks here on Stars and Strikes. Next week will be the semifinal match, and it will be Ed Emerson coming to us from Henniker. And uh, there's the situation. As you see, Brian Fuller with the win today over Clarence Davis, and now he will move on to face Ed Emerson next week, and then two weeks from today, of course, it'll be the ladder championship. 
Well, it should be exciting. The money gets bigger, uh, the pressure gets a little more, they start squeezing the ball a little more, every pin means a little more. Uh, it gets exciting towards the end of the ladder. All right, once again, uh, we want to invite you to join us next weekend for the ladder semifinal match, the Nults Championship Series here on Candlepin Stars and Strikes. We hope you'll be with us next weekend. Until then, for Dan Murphy and the whole TV50 sports crew, Doug Brown saying so long, everybody, from Park Place Lanes.